All right, I'm going to begin the shimming part of the ICS PCR 97 with the uh, stock ICS bevel gear and then two gears that are SHS uh, 13 to 1 ratio. Um, I've got point 0.1 and point 0.2 there, and then I uh, think this time it's going to be different than any shim video I've done is I'm going to add shims to what's already there. Um, Usually, I clean the gears and redo this whole process by hand by myself uh, without, you know, relying on someone else's work or, or with whatever's in the gearbox. But this time, because I've been practicing a lot of uh, shimming with what's already there, basically to um, stay advanced with anything that, you know, would pop up uh, shimming related wise. So, um, I've got some shims on the top and bottom here. It looks like two on the top and one on the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start shimming. And use my method of uh, shaking the gear and then checking play by, by hand, sight, feel, and taste. Just kidding. <laughs> So I want to probably go 0.2. So I'm going to throw a 0.2 on here. It's probably too tight, barely, at this point. And I need to probably go to a 0.1. This is my own suggestion to myself. There's zero play, but you know, once it's tightened, it's going to be tight, so course I was pretty much figured that that's what was going to happen. Man, my right hand is just shaky. Grab a point one here. Okay, there is some up and down movement. Jeffrey, What's up? I have my purse down here all night on the on bench. Holy shit, was I tired yesterday. Well, that's kind of your mistake. <laughs> and it was open. And nothing was taken. Nobody helped me come by. Thankfully, that nobody can see in the dark, right? They would need Holy a flashlight. Holy shit. You know, you're, you're on the recording, Mom. I told you about this. She just loves to do whatever when I tell her that, you know. Okay, there is play. Please, can't you splice that? No, I need to have content. And now you're part of it. <laughs> I can't believe that. I'm going to have to see if they're on that broadcast. Okay, mom, can you can you not talk to yourself? <laughs> oh Otherwise, I'd have to get rid of all video footage. <laughs> well, I thought you left it out there for a different reason. You know, maybe there was the purse fairy or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the purse fairy. <laughs> So, um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pin this because I like that pin for some reason. Put this up in here. And tighten this. And then the other screw, which is where? Right here. Purse fairy really did exist. I would put, I would grab a man purse and put it outside. Wouldn't you? <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
Now one thing I did check on this uh, gun is how the end plate connects to the motor. And the reason for that is because you try to look for a shorting. And I remember in my first video of this gun, the uh, disassembly of it, the, um, I need to get a screwdriver for this part. The end plate was getting scratched by the red connector of the, to the motor. And if that happened on the black side, it would have had a short because it would have gone through metal to metal. And the end plate's metal and it's just painted black. Yeah, a flaw basically in the whole setup of this. But uh, everyone does that for some reason, except for I've seen one plate that was plastic. It was Magpul. Um, so I already checked that. Wow, there's a lot of play here. A lot of play. And uh, bushings barely protrude uh, from the gearbox shell. Motor height was already checked. Uh, yeah, just look at this play, man. Holy crud. That's a lot of play. That's something you do not want. And uh, the reason you have a lot of this play is the uh, brands probably. Um, there's not going to be much, very much shipping that I can move from the bottom to the top. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe it's just me. Let me see something here. Yeah, it's, it's the spacing. There is some space in the bottom of the bevel which means that uh, it's because of the way I'm holding it, isn't it? Yep, that's interesting. As I rotated it, the bevel fell back down. There is some space, but I can't put another 0.1 millimeter because it would make it too tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this back apart. Uh, just look at first for friction. This is the original ICS, I guess. I'm not sure which pinion this is supposed to be. There's some marking and spiraling in this too, but this uh, this pinion has bigger teeth for sure. For sure has bigger teeth. And that would probably remove the uh, spacing in there that's there right now. Um, so right here we're experiencing a problem that I haven't experienced for a while and that is that the uh, that the um, space between the bevel and pinion is very big basically it looks like to be because of the brand that's what it looks like to be we're gonna pull the pinion out and kind of uh, view it and see if we can see something going on is pretty nice. It holds in there well. Good job on that ICS for sure. Alright, let's flip this over here. And let's not do this. So I can tell you that uh, part of that spiral effect is having uh, too much space. That was it's beyond space. So you have the edge of your, of your teeth touching or the uh, bevel was put in too tightly from here you know you try to confirm by looking at the actual piece that 
what the person might have had done or how they got to that point. That's kind of what the uh, markings do look like. We can confirm this. Pull this out here. And on the bottom, got what may look like a 0.1. Wow, this gear is extremely close to the wiring. Freaking nose is hurting. All right. Well, definitely removes the friction effect having a shim, which I could tell just by looking at the teeth are hitting the uh, bushing. It looks like to me that's a point one. this uh, so we pull out the caliper and it is definitely a point one so so in other words uh, this isn't looking too good let's confirm that the issue is with the bevel Okay, so we're going to turn this over in the shell that would require it. Okay, so right now there would be zero friction uh, within the gearbox shell, the way it's shimmed. Um, and there's just enough movement, which is supposed to be. Alright, so what I do is I put the pinion in here. And uh, look at how it lines up. Now, it's kind of hard to do this by hand. I Usually what I do is I grab the motor uh, that has it, remove the spring, and you're going to put this up in there and confirm that it would make that kind of marking. So you're going to want to take this and uh, get it right at your eye level and see... I'm trying to hold this straight. Um, part of this does look like, yes, it's way too far apart. And it's going to get worse. This is a spare pinion from uh, one of my other Lonex motors. It seems that the spacing is what's wrong. This looks like it may have been messed up from uh, shimming at first. Either way, what's there now is not ideal at all. There's no way I would try to run this because it's just going to mess up your pinion. Uh, we have the opposite. Uh, what I'm not used to is it's not close enough at all. It's uh, too far away. Um, so this is definitely not going to be uh, any good rotational spin and noise and definitely not going to be good for the pinion. I can tell you right now, if I was to rerun this, that uh, it would more than likely look like this at some point. I mean, the amount of play is unreal. It's just unreal. You can see that. Um, so what am I to do here? What am I to do here? Well, I have a lot of uh, 
spares myself. So let's see if we can try to work something out here. <clears throat> Let's see. This has no teeth missing, no nothing. I'm just checking. Make sure it's not one of the gears just keep for some other reason. Got other pinions too, but I'm not going to switch the pinion out until I'm positive. We've got an S. Here's an SC uh, Siege Tech actually right here. This is a Siege Tech too. I'm going to mix these so I can get a better mesh. So this is going to come out, even though it's been shown properly, uh, for spacing. And we're going to try to drop in something else. Now here's how this works. you got to first drop in your spur gear and make sure that it meshes. Because when you're mixing brands, if that don't happen, don't even start shimming. So this shimming video is going to be even more unique, is that we're mixing brands here to avoid issues. That does not sound right at all. It's probably because the metal is warped. And there's marking here. Uh, what that means is like, you know, this cheap metal gets hot you know, when it's made or something and it kind of warps. So this is not completely flat, straight. It may look like it by the eye, but it is not. So putting this in, this is a grinding effect. Uh, even when held in the middle. See, look, I'm holding down the middle. And it's grinding right here, you can hear. And see that it's grinding right there. So, um, I'm just going to throw on a point two just to avoid the grinding for now. Let's go ahead and take off the top shim. Because I don't care what it is. See now, it should avoid touching the gearbox. See how much smoother that sounds? Okay, so go ahead and drop in a gear. Now, here's how it works is if you can turn it now, which I cannot. <laughs> I can't even get it in. How would you like your, your gear to be closed like that? Let's see if I can close the gearbox. Um, so that's not going to work. I'm going to grab the next bell gear. And oh, thankfully it goes in. But you want to make sure you know that it can turn. And just because it turns by hand, doesn't mean that it's going to work. What you need to do is close it because this centrals the uh, axles and you can see you know, if there's an issue or not. Wow, that's all I can say is this is uh, extremely close to the wiring edge. And what I mean by that is if you were to pick up this gear, this post right here that uh, prevents the wiring from coming back into the gear. See right here the post. Um, that basically just touches. Just barely nicks it. And so I may have to drummel that off just a little bit in the area. I'm not going to remove the post, just the area of it so that you know it doesn't grind or have that possibility. Yeah, see, look, there's already an issue. Yep, it's stuck. A 
thing is that the teeth might be way too close together. And I think that's what's going on here. The teeth are way too close together. It can almost make it. if I want to take a Dremel and slightly hit each one of these teeth or I could uh, run it and let it hit down each one of these teeth um, so what problem am I having here it's got to be in, in the bevel because it's a short spin cycle if it was a long spin cycle it'd be in the spur if that makes sense to you because see how many teeth the spur has but it's somewhere within the bevel, probably. Close this up and uh, no, it's probably in the spur. See, because look, it's a long, it's a long spin cycle. See that they don't mesh together uh, properly. However, I do have more gears to try. Um, uh, oh, my nose, man. All right, so here is another two bevels that are the same, I'm pretty sure, so. God, man. If you're wondering what I'm talking about with my nose, it's there's a lot of heat coming out of the nostril. I don't know what the hell that is. Sinus is starting up. Maybe, who knows what it really is. Okay. So these are like probably close to meshing, I'm going to guess. And the reason for that is because they kind of come out of the uh, same um, factory, I bet. Look at that. And that would require me not to have to uh, chop down that wiring area. Yep. There's just a tiny bit of spacing. Look between the gears here. Uh, holy crap, that is close. We might get a spiral effect in between the gears here. Oh yeah, that's 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 not even kidding. That's less than 0.1 millimeter. Oh, as I spin it, the bevel gear pops up uh, like this, meaning that there definitely needs to be a spacer below the uh, bevel gear. Let's start with at least uh, uh, 0.2 on the bottom of this. Still needs to be more space. <laughs> Another point two, just for the hell of it. Uh, the difference between this gear is there's not very much thickness on the bevel teeth areas, so because of that, there's going to be some space. Oh, that's much smoother. That's because we just barely got over. Yeah, there's barely a gap. Finally, barely a gap for the uh, spur gear. I'm going to put, I mean, that's like a close to almost 100% still. I'm going to not use two, I'll use a point one this time. Put on the bottom of the uh, bevel gear here. So that's how much space we need to remove um, 
grinding between the spur gear. Oh, wow, that's a nice spin now. Yeah, that's beautiful. And the bevel gear does not bounce up at all. Yeah, there's just barely enough space. Okay, now to find space on top of the bevel gear, um, we're gonna need at least a couple point twos. How do I know that right away without even moving it up? I look down the, uh, the hole right here that ICS has uh, made for me. Good thing and when I look down you know I could see here and here that there's a gap and over here you can see too uh, now I'll check for play looks like there's still a gap barely up and down so uh, at this point I want to go ahead and tighten the gearbox uh, back together Trying to find which screw goes to which real quick. I think this was the screw I was using was this one. Yeah, that was the one I was using. Okay. Uh, might as well just remove the spur movement. There's barely up and down movement for the bevel, so the bevel's good, but let's remove the spur movement so it doesn't come up into the bevel. Uh, go with a point two on top of the spur. And put both of these back on here. If you are wondering, the tops of the axles with the shim should be all flat and level uh, to one another. Too tight. Too tight. dropped one on the floor. I'll have to get that later. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. I couldn't see very well. Okay. That is extremely smooth. Okay, so Go ahead and tighten her down. Somebody's gonna be like, you gotta tighten the whole gearbox. You gotta make sure the whole gearbox is tight. This is no good. You don't know how to shim. You get comments like that all the time. Well, excuse me for not showing on video. Gearbox is tight. And uh, if there is any up and down movement, which there's barely, if I was to tighten all these, it would be the same. And that comes from experience. What I'm doing is preventing the spur gear from coming up into the bevel, and which it is definitely prevented. And you can see that in the uh, spinning. That's beautiful. That's the kind of spinning you want. And hopefully the bevel does come down more. So, um, I already know that if you were to check either side of the gearbox, there would be no grinding. It's frictionless right now. Uh, well, there's still some friction regardless because, you know, the gear always has some friction. But it's frictionless uh, to idealness of um, just the what's necessary. That's me holding the bevel gear, making that uh, weird zip sound. 
checking something. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can get this in there. I mean, if you look at it down here, bevel gear looks like it comes down more. Go ahead, pop that in, pin it, and uh, get the motor going. If I was going to buy another M4, I'd probably get an ICS type, just because I can tell you I already like this uh, compared to other M4s. This is not bad. I mean, the split gearbox is pretty nice design. guys uh, M4 has really changed my opinion on the ICS uh, just because I've never had one and uh, looking at it from a technician point of view uh, this is not bad at all it would be a pretty good purchase okay so, so here we go with the uh, Lonex motor drop it in oh it's not springy because there's no spring Duh. And uh, it seems that it has gotten really tight. <clears throat> Someone might say, well, you need to check motor height first. In all cases, no matter what, new bevel gear, check motor height. Well, as often as I've done this, a lot of the times, and what I mean is 95, maybe close to just 100%, I'm just making a number up here, the motor height will regardless stay the same because the gears have the same uh, diameter. Um, so because of that, the motor height probably doesn't need to be moved but it does need to be confirmed that it is the same because if you don't confirm it and you know you just go to shoot it you can grind your gears or something just because you didn't set it up properly so for right now I'm just checking uh, how much space there is This is definitely better, much better. Um, so we are going to take out the ICS gear and switch. And there's, just to show the amount of play if I can. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. That's almost ideally perfect for me. Um, so I will go through and uh, finish this up. I've got to do something with my nose right now uh, on the bevel part. But this video will be about the bevel's pinion, and you can see that I had to swap out gears, how to check this properly when you're mixing the brands. Um, you can see that I've got this in the way that you would mix this properly. It's going to cycle when I get done because I've done all the checking that's necessary. And I can confirm that this is... Uh, this kind of damage was too low. You know, it, this is a good reason why is because also there's nothing damaged at the front. At first I was assuming this was too tight, but you gotta take a closer look sometimes and compare, and that's what I just did. Um, let's take a closer look and compare. Now this is at the back only, meaning that it's the bevel gear is just too far away from the uh, pinion. And uh, if you're doing this at home, this guy that owns this gun um, may not have realized, you know, that this requires a little bit more tightening to it, close enough uh, to grab, because the further away you are, you're just going to damage those teeth. It's resisting to turn. It's having a hard time to turn. Uh, the motor is too far away, making it harder to turn. It's kind of like uh, not you. It's it to, in comparison, sort of. 
it's like having your muscles, but when you go to bench press, you bench press up closer away from your chest, maybe to your neck, and you don't have any strength there. The motor just doesn't have the uh, torque or, or pull, you know, one's further away. Um, it just can't grasp uh, the bevel gear very well when it's too far away. So the ideal spot is to get as close as possible without touching. And uh, that's what's going to probably be done here. I mean, there's very, you can see right here just by using the spur gear. We're getting very close there. Um, okay, so I'll end this video for now. Um, and we'll be moving on.